Good morning. Welcome to uh, Quitman First United Methodist Church. So good to have all of you here. I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas and is looking forward to the new year. Just have a few announcements. Uh, the church offices, they will be closed December uh, 29th through the 31st, so that'll be Wednesday to Friday. Heads up. Um, next Sunday, January 2nd, they will go, we will go back to our regular worship service scheduled, which if you don't know, is 8.30 a.m. is the early service in the sanctuary. Uh, 10, 10 a.m. we have Sunday school, and then at 11 a.m. we have the uh, regular worship service, the traditional worship service in uh, the sanctuary as well. So January 2nd, we'll start back on our, our regular routine. Uh, if you've ordered uh, any of these poinsettias, if any of these are yours, uh, please feel free after the service to uh, pick them up. Maybe put a few ice cubes in them when you, when you get home and uh, get them freshened back up. At this time, is there anything else that you'd like to, to add to that? Okay. Uh, if there's, there's one more thing I might add, I just want to also remind everybody, January 5th, the choir will start back on their regular routine as well. So January 5th for the choir. All right. Um, at this time, would you stand and greet your neighbor? A little off. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, if you can come back and take your seat, we're going to start our worship service. Gail is going to play a beautiful uh, piece for us this morning.
stand with me. We'll st sing uh, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
before we get to the Apostles' Creed, let me just tell you, um, there are a lot of donuts back there, <laughs> and uh, some kolaches, and some juice, and for one time only, one time only for the year, you can get up during church, even during the sermon, <laughs> and go get donuts, and, and coffee, and whatever you want. Um, and then when we're done today, because I think we overshot on, uh, on the donuts, even if y'all all ate 10, I think we'd have a few extra. I would like to see if we'd have one volunteer to carry uh, a couple of dozen, maybe five or six dozen to the police station, and then uh, somebody else carry the rest, however many dozen that is, to the hospital and tell them that Methodist Church loves you and wants you to have this, you know, something good on Sunday after Christmas. Okay? Just two volunteers. There's one in it, and there's two. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. And by the way, uh, everybody tell Daryl, thank you for the announcements. <laughs> you don't know, that wasn't Daryl. <laughs> okay? And uh, last thing, Liberty also goes back to normal church schedule next week at 9.30. So it's 8.30, 9.30, 11 in here. Uh, I mean, uh, for, the, for the late service, we go, everything will go back to normal next, next uh, Sunday. Okay? All right. So those things that we believe. By the way, thank you for coming. Extra credit to you today <laughs> because it's the Sunday after Christmas. Extra credit and donuts for you. <laughs> Join with me in the things that we believe as the body of Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right. Thank you. Please uh, be seated. And I'm going to be really uh, pretty quick on our prayers this morning. Um, of course, we have a lot of prayers. We always do. And I've said this to you uh, many times. Keep those uh, prayers and the prayer list with you and pray. Um, carry it around with you. Put it in your car. Pray for all those people because they're all, they all need your prayers. Um, I do want to mention this. And I don't know how many people know this, uh, this man. Dan Williams passed away. Um, Dan Williams was a real strong member of this church for a long time, uh, lived, I believe, out in Phoenix with his daughter. Um, I don't know any details yet. Um, I think they might be talking with Daryl, and uh, as soon as I know, we'll get word to you guys, uh, or Daryl, one of us will, okay, on that. I think they might be coming back here, but we don't know yet, all right? But prayers for that family. Um, I, I know that that uh, Steve has a, a Christmas birthday yesterday, so that's, you're getting a lot of mileage out of this, it's a birthday, <laughs> Steve, all right, any other joys, prayers, concerns, okay, would you pray with me, Father Almighty, we thank you for the joy of this time, and we thank you for the gifts uh, of grace and uh, the beauty of this season. We also know that for a lot of people right now, um, things are trying. We know that it's not all joy. We know that in case, some cases there's a lot of grief, and a lot of hurt, and a lot of pain. So we pray for all, of, and we pray for joy for all, and we ask you, God, to heal and to protect and to give hope to all. We ask your blessings on our churches so that we can be the church that you've called us to be, one in our ministry to this hurting world around us. We pray these things and ask them all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray this particular prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I skipped the offering one time, only one time, in church, and I heard about it from a lot of the church people. Um, so if, you're, if your offering is going to Liberty, okay, write a big L on it. If you got a $100 bill, put a big L on it, it'll be okay, all right, and, and give it to Arlen. If you, <laughs> I didn't warn him about that ahead of time. Um, but otherwise, uh, the ushers are ready, and they'll collect the offering for today. And uh, if you would, pray with me. Almighty God, we ask that all we give to you is a blessing to the world. We ask you, God, to touch and multiply everything that we do, everything that we give, every generosity, every act of kindness. We pray that it will be far-reaching to bring people hope and mercy in amazing and spectacular ways. So we ask these things, God, and pray that you bless all the givers. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.
be seated. The passage that uh, I um, love to read on Christmas or right around Christmas or Christmas Day is this one um, from Luke. I think it's uh, a pretty cool passage from the Bible about the birth of, of Christ. So I'm sharing that with you this morning from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, and it goes like this. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid them in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, would you pray with me? Almighty God, I pray that the words of my lips and the thoughts of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable to you at this time. Amen. All right. Now, I'm going to get to that title in a second. But I want to tell you something. Religion is not the same thing as um, following Christ. Okay? It's not the same thing. Religion... Um, tends to equate joy to happiness. It's based on our circumstances. If things are going good, then we can have happiness and joy. But if things are not going good, then something's wrong. Okay? The friends of Job think this way. They think in terms of religion, but not in terms of following God. So I want to explain to you what the Hebrew word is for joy, all right? It's like a lot of Hebrew. It's made up of a couple of characters, a couple of letters. And the first one is simcha, okay? There'll be a quiz later. Simcha. It's associated with human emotions like having a great time at a party, okay, or glee. It's used about 88 times in the Old Testament. The second is chedva, 
It's only used twice in the Old Testament in Nehemiah. Um, that's, uh, I'll give you the quote, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in order to get the actual picture that this word is describing, we look at the ancient Hebrew symbols that go with these letters. Um, Shedva is a noun that comes from a verb, and the consonants are Chet, Dalet, and He. So let me give you this picture, all right? Three letters from the Hebrew alphabet. Chet, Dalet, and hay. The Chet is a wall in a fence, okay? Uh, a, a, a wall that goes across or a fence or whatever you want to say, okay? Fence. A Dalit is a door. So you got a fence and you got a door. And if you know enough about the Old Testament, it's not hard to see this, but that word, that dalet, representing a way in, it's, it's used as uh, a representation of going into a covenant with someone, entering into a covenant with someone, okay? So walking into um, someone's house, you have actually made a covenant with the owner of that house. Does that make sense? All right, so when you put all this together, you get this phrase, behold a door in the fence. There's a way in, okay? There's a way in. So when we think about this, and we think about it in terms of what it means to follow Christ, joy, there is a path there is a way in. There is a hole in the fence for us to enter into the presence of God. Okay? Everybody with me so far? You're not like in a donut hangover or something already, are you? Okay, just making sure. All right. There is a way or a path into the presence of God. So, what joy means to us or should mean to us is that God and us can have fellowship together. Right? So stay with me. That means God's not somewhere far away, you know, up in the universe tending to, you know, quarks and anti-quarks or whatever. It means that Christ has given us a path to be in fellowship with God himself. And that is joy. That should be joy. If that's not cool enough for you, then let me give you a little Greek. Okay? Because the Greek word for joy is, um, well, I, I, I'll add this to the test. Okay? Kara. Kara, and if you know enough Greek, you'll start to put that together. It's where we get the word um, charity, charitable. It's the word for grace, favor, or joy, or in this case, grace recognized. We recognize God's grace to us. So what's this great news good news of joy for all the people. It's this amazing news that Jesus, as God, has entered into the daily life of this workaday world and redeemed all of it. Redeemed the world. Saved the world. And saved us. Saved every one of us. I saw a story a long time ago by, about a girl named Sarah Clark, single, pregnant, waitress, with a fiancé who couldn't find work. Her regular customers knew a little about her life because she you know, talked with them and all that. But one of her customers knew a little something about great joy. And this customer knows something about God's grace. 
one busy night at the restaurant, Sarah gave the customer her ticket. Total ticket was $61. And you know how the ticket has the total and then her line for the tip on the receipt. The customer filled in that line and said, I'm quoting, this is God's money. He gave it to us so we could give it to you. God bless. And then filled in the tip. $61 ticket. You know what the tip was? $900. Sarah Clark, right at that moment, whether she knew it or not, experienced the amazing grace of God. She didn't earn God's love. She didn't earn that gift. She didn't even necessarily ask for it, but she got it anyway. Another woman named Cece Bruce was working as a waitress at Steak and Shake. Y'all know about Steak and Shake? Okay. Steak and Shake restaurant, Indianapolis, Indiana. And one day she was being treated really poorly by some very rude customers. Okay? Don't, you know, I worked in a restaurant. Y'all know that? I worked in a restaurant for a long, I ran a restaurant for a long time. And I worked seven days a week. And you know who the worst customers were? The Sunday after church crowd. They are the worst. Ask any restaurant. I, I'm batting a thousand. I've asked every restaurant. I've asked people all the time, and you know what they say every time? The Sunday after church crowd. It's probably the Baptist, but <laughs> just make sure, okay? make sure. So CC was working, had these rude customers, which is part of being in a restaurant. And she said, I was having a hard time at another table. She said, but I just kept smiling and going on because that's what you have to do. And then CC encountered unexpected grace. And she picked up the credit card payment from a customer whose order was $5.97. $5.97. And the customer added a tip. $446, 75 times the cost of the meal. Cece ran out the restaurant and chased down the customer, tried to refuse the gift, but the customer just smiled and said, no, it's yours. So Cece, when the news found out about it, told this reporter, I didn't think I was worth $400, but apparently she felt like I am. That's entering into the presence of God. That's the joy of God. There are a lot of people in this world, trust me, some of you maybe even, who feel like they're not worth being given the grace of God. But you are. Apparently, even if you think you're not, God thinks you are. These two waitresses receive joy. But if you really stop and think about it, if you really stop and look at it the way I look at it, you know something? The ones who gave them joy, the ones who recognized them, they saw a door in the fence. They experienced the joy of the master which is what Matthew 25 says, enter in to the joy of your master. Religion causes people to question their worth or their value. It tries to establish that idea that we have to strive for good things, that good things are rare or short-lived or glimpses of little blessing that will never last long. Religion wants us to believe that we should do good because it's how we earn good back. I mean, religion not only can lead everyone astray, but it can cause us to lead other people astray. This is the message of Luke 11. Remember a little quote from Luke 11? Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were trying to enter. Door and offense. 
God loves unconditionally. No human is as they should be. No human ever is. But God loves us unconditionally. It is a message of grace. It isn't cheap, but it is free. This is good news of great joy. So as we close this uh, worship service and we close this um, time and enter into a new year and a, and a new beginning and all those things in the life of the church, we carry this with us into the future. We carry this vision of a way in, of fellowship with Christ, with God. We carry this with us, a door in the fence. We carry it into a dark and hurting world that needs it so much and so bad. I got it a long time ago when I never deserved it. Those people out there do too. If y'all knew me when I was 20 years old, you wouldn't want me standing up here. I promise. So let's go out into the world and be that church, giving people a door in to fellowship with God himself. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, help us to be the church that you've called us to be, the church that watches for the opportunity to see with our own eyes an opportunity to walk through that door, to walk through those barriers, to bring people hope, to bring people grace, and to bring people into that amazing and wondrous presence of Christ, of God, and of the Spirit. To recognize that overwhelming feeling of grace that we are given no matter what. Let us, O oh Lord, walk into the world and be that church for those hurting around us. I ask this for all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand with me and sing the closing hymn. So glad that y'all are here. Uh, Merry Christmas. Have a great day and a great week. And remember that in this week, wherever we are, there will be God. There will be a way in. There will be a pathway into his presence. Rejoice in that. Celebrate that. And go in peace. Amen. Amen.